Yeah, we know. Libertarians don't get a lot of screen time. <laughs> Presidential debates. But when we do, just watch. My biggest beef is, is that from a libertarian viewpoint, there is absolutely no difference between Hillary and Trump. We sure make the most of it. And every now and then, a libertarian truth bomb sneaks its way onto the screen, especially in movies. And we wanted to highlight some of the most powerful. Let's start with what many people consider the two greatest movies of all time. The Godfather Part 1 is about bad people doing bad things. No spoilers there unless you've been living under a rock since 1972. Mafia members comprise most of the bad people doing bad things, but as they say, it takes one to know one. I'm working for my father now, Kate. He's been sick. Very sick. But you're not like him, Michael. I thought you weren't going to become a man like your father. That's what you told me. My father's no different than any other powerful man. <sighs> any man who's responsible for other people. Like a senator or a president. Do you know how naive you sound? Why? Senators and presidents don't have men killed. Who's being naive, Kay? Now, some say The Godfather Part 2 is even better than Part 1. We'll leave it to you to hash it out in the comments, but in the meantime, let's watch how it portrays a sitting U.S. Senator. Now, the price for the license is less than $20,000, am I right? That's right. Now, why would I ever consider paying more than that? Because I intend to squeeze you. I don't like your kind of people. I don't like to see you come out to this clean country in your oily hair, dressed up in those silk suits, and try to pass yourselves off as decent Americans. I'll do business with you, but the fact is that I despise your masquerade, the dishonest way you pose yourself, yourself and your whole fucking family. We're both part of the same hypocrisy. But never think it applies to my family. All right. All right. Some people have to play little games. You play yours. So let's just say that you'll pay me because it's in your interest to pay me. But I want you answering the money by noon tomorrow. We'd be shocked if something like that has never happened in real life. On the other hand, we can be pretty sure this never happened in real life, but that doesn't make Captain America's stance any less righteous. These new long-range precision guns can eliminate a thousand hostiles a minute. The satellites can read a terrorist's DNA before he steps outside his spider hole. We're gonna neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. That's the punishment usually came after the crime. We can't afford to wait that long. Who's weak? After New York, I convinced the World Security Council we needed a quantum surge in threat analysis. For once, we're way ahead of the curve. By holding a gun to everyone on Earth and calling it protection. You know, I read those SSR files. Greatest generation? You guys did some nasty stuff. Yeah. We compromised. Sometimes in ways that made us not sleep so well. But we did it so that people could be free. This isn't freedom. This is fear. S.H.I.E.L.D. takes the world as it is, not as we'd like it to be. And it's getting damn near past time for you to get with that program, Cap. Don't hold your breath. Now, this is pretty trippy. This next speech didn't even technically happen fictionally. But Tom Hanks has told us what Forrest was saying about war in that simple, poignant way only he could. We took the liberty of adding subtitles. Well... There was only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. Well, there's only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. In Vietnam, your people... Oh. 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 O
Get in this goddamn pointer! Jesus Christ, what are they doing this? Now, The Godfather Part 1 or 2 might be the greatest movie ever made, but the greatest baseball movie ever made, Field of Dreams, includes this doozy of a free speech speech at a parent-teacher association meeting in small town Iowa. The so-called novels of Terrence Mann endorse promiscuity, godlessness, the mongrelization of the races, and disrespect to high-ranking officers of the United States Army. And that is why right-thinking school boards all across the country have been banning this man's S-H-I-T since 1969. I've got a better idea. Let's put it to a vote, all right? Who's for Eva Braun here? Who wants to burn books? Who wants to spit on the Constitution of the United States of America? Anybody? All right. Now, who's for the Bill of Rights? Who thinks freedom is a pretty darn good thing? Come on, come on, let's see those hands. Who thinks that we have to stand up to the kind of censorship that they had under Stalin? There you go, America. I love you. I'm proud of you. I mean it. Before we continue, make sure to hit that like button and hit the bell button so you get notified when we release new videos. Okay, now that you've done that, let's see how many people we can piss off. This next scene features Ron Woodruff, diagnosed like so many with AIDS in the 1980s. But like so many, his fight for survival was made more difficult because the FDA was slow to approve treatments. And by the way, any relevance Dallas Buyers Club released in 2013 would have, oh, seven or eight years later, purely coincidental. Ah, uh, Mr. Woodruff. Dr. Steve Ard. Uh, I bet you're surprised to see me. Well, you nearly killed yourself. So, we need to know where you acquired the drugs. Well, I need to know just exactly what you're pumping into my bloodstream here, Doc. All right. This is a combination of AZT, and uh, we also got a full spectrum. Uh, don't, don't. I'm suing you for attempted murder. Where's my stuff, Barkley? Your stuff gave you a heart attack. Go to hell. I say what goes in my body, not you. That decision, like it or not, is left up to the people in this hospital. Don't you think I'm one of your goddamn guinea pigs of art, huh? I look like a rodent to you. Mr. Woodard, you think you're clever? You shoot your body full of an unknown drug and you smuggle in a two-year supply. Well, hear this. I will bust you, I will take your drugs, and I will burn them. You're done. You're a fool if you think you're helping yourself. Yeah, that's right. I fooled you, didn't I? You said I'd be dead in 30 days. Well, howdy fucking duty, because it's a year later, and look at who's still here. I'm done with you. Ronnie. Uh, you got anything oh. left to say to me? You say it to my real doctor, Dr. E. Sachs, and you? In the fucking army. Mr. Woodruff, please get back in the bed. Enjoy the view. What the hell is going on in here? I think it's good though, right? It's time straight. This one's a classic. Gregory Peck won an Oscar in 1962 for his performance as Atticus Finch, a southern lawyer defending a black man in a rape trial. To begin with, this case should never have come to trial. The state has not produced one iota of medical evidence that the crime Tom Robertson is charged with ever took place. It has relied instead upon the testimony of two witnesses whose evidence has not only been called into serious question on cross-examination, but has been flatly contradicted by the defendant. The witnesses for the state 
with the exception of the sheriff of Macon County, have presented themselves to you gentlemen, to this court. And the cynical confidence that their testimony would not be doubted the defendant is not guilty, but somebody in this courtroom is. We can't tell you who that person is without spoiling the plot, but as Atticus says, the state hardly bothers to make a compelling case. It's confident people will just go along for the ride. The newspapers, they all went along for the ride. Are we sure To Kill a Mockingbird is fictional? Be in the palm of some fool. Finally, we can't top this one. V for Vendetta was a classic as soon as it was released in 2005. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. We think, just let me I think. I even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. It's Chancellor Sutler. Damn it! Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? You designed it, sir. You wanted it foolproof. You told me every television in London. Cruelty and injustice, intolerance and oppression. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit, you now have sensors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and selecting your submission. We need cameras. How did this happen? Who's to blame? Well, certainly there are those who are more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. I know why you did it. I know you were afraid. Who wouldn't be? War, terror, disease. There were a myriad of problems which conspired to corrupt your reason and rob you of your common sense. Fear got the best of you, and in your panic you turned to the now High Chancellor Adam Sutler. He promised you order, he promised you peace, and all he demanded in return was your silent, obedient consent. There you go, eight great anti-state libertarian moments in movie history. Before we get to one last shockingly realistic portrayal of a power-hungry politician, hit that like button and let us know in the comments. What would you add to this list? Okay, ready? I am a Senate. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not, That's the, right not the right clip. The Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. Not yet. <laughs>